These four devices may very well be the best camera smartphones that 2023 has to offer. So today we'll be comparing the iPhone 14 Pro Max, Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, Oppo Find X6 Pro, and Xiaomi 13 Pro in this extremely detailed smartphone camera comparison where we'll be testing out day and night photos and videos. The iPhone 14 Pro Max packs in a 12 megapixel ultra wide telephoto and selfie camera while the main camera sits at 48 megapixels. The Samsung Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra is kitted with a 12 megapixel ultra wide and selfie camera, a 10 megapixel telephoto and periscope camera, and an insane 200 megapixel main camera. The Oppo Find X6 Pro has a 32 megapixel selfie camera and three 50 megapixel sensors for the ultra wide, main, and periscope cameras. It uses the largest smartphone periscope sensor in the world, and its main camera is a whopping one inch type sensor. And lastly, the Xiaomi 13 Pro has an identical setup to the Oppo with a 32 megapixel selfie camera as well as three 50 megapixel sensors on the back for the ultra wide, main and telephoto. The telephoto sits on a floating mechanism and the main camera is also the large one inch type sensor from Sony. Will the iPhone superior processing and consistency stand out? Will the Samsung's 200 megapixel counts make all the difference? Will the Oppo's three main camera error change the game? Or will the Xiaomi's like a partnership put all else to shame? This is Technic, and without further ado, let's find out. What's up guys, this is Technic, recording a selfie video on four of the best camera smartphones that 2023 has to offer. The iPhone and Samsung can both shoot selfie video at 4K 60fps, while the Oppo and Xiaomi are both capped at 1080p 30fps when using the selfie camera to record video. Let me know your thoughts on the video as well as the microphone quality when using the selfie cam on these four devices. The iPhone takes the lead in selfie video stability due to OIS and while it is the most detailed, it's also the sharpest. The Samsung now matches the iPhone with 4K portrait video this year. The Samsung has the best edge detection and color accuracy. The iPhone is the most saturated and has the largest depth of field. As for the ultra wide selfie photos, the Oppo again misses out on tonal range. The Xiaomi is well rounded, the Samsung is underexposed and the iPhone looks the cleanest. Only the Samsung and Oppo offer an ultra wide selfie portrait mode. The Samsung is still underexposed but has superior depth while the Oppo is strangely colored but has a wider field of view. At one times, selfies are identical to when at 0.8x. When in one times portrait mode, the Samsung is almost perfect aside from the terrible underexposure. The Oppo and Xiaomi overdo background blur but the Xiaomi seems to be the most natural looking. Moving on to the back cameras, using their respective telephoto sensors for portrait shots, it's pretty clear the Oppo takes the lead here due to that massive periscope sensor. If I had to choose a second place here, it would probably go to the Xiaomi. Due to the large one inch sensors on the Oppo and Xiaomi, their portrait shots using the main sensors come out the cleanest. The Samsung is very oversaturated, but still offers fantastic depth of field, while the iPhone looks the most natural of the lot. When using the main sensor to take a portrait of an object, the iPhone seems a bit underexposed, but offers fantastic natural looking depth, while the Samsung offers phenomenal edge detection and seems to nail the color accuracy of this pot plant. Taking the same shot, but this time using optical zoom portraits from their telephoto sensors, the Samsung again comes out on top with color accuracy and edge detection. The Oppo isn't far off. The Xiaomi mainly focuses on the flowers and the iPhone mainly on the pot. The Oppo and Xiaomi both offer close-up focusing with their telephotos. The Oppo has a minimum focusing distance of 25 centimeters, while the Xiaomi is capable of 10 centimeters to infinity focusing thanks to its floating telephoto sensor. But even with that floating sensor, I feel the Oppo is a step ahead. Moving back to their main cams, this time setting all of them to their native resolution, the iPhone, Oppo and Xiaomi look the most natural, but it's clear the Samsung packs in the most detail with its 200 megapixel sensor, which is evident when cropping in by 400% and the Samsung's vibrancy makes things even better. The Oppo seems to lose the most detail when cropped in, the Xiaomi is a bit more saturated, and the iPhone is the least saturated, making for a natural looking photo, even when close up. Using their high megapixel counts again, but this time with a human subject, that being me of course, the Samsung seriously oversaturates things here, but offers nice rich shadows. The Xiaomi is quite well balanced, the Oppo a tad overexposed, and the iPhone a tad underexposed. And when cropping in, focusing on detail here, strangely enough, the iPhone is supreme, retaining fantastic detail and color accuracy. The Samsung is still quite oversaturated and seems to be the smoothest, while the Oppo seems to be the sharpest and the Xiaomi trails 
rivals the pack here. The last native shot I took was of a landscape. The Samsung's 200 megapixel sensor definitely came to win here. The Xiaomi isn't far off the Samsung, rendering a similar result. However, the Oppo seriously impressed me here. It's not too oversaturated, the bricks on the floor are filled with the most detail, while still retaining detail in the background buildings and also manages to separate colors very well. But when cropping in, the Oppo once again loses a lot of detail, even though it's using the same sensor as the Xiaomi, which retains most of its detail when cropped in. But in all fairness, the Xiaomi isn't perfect either, since it tends to make the leaves of the tree appear a bit like an oil painting. These leaves look a lot better on the Samsung, but again, quite over sharpened. That said, the iPhone once again surprised me here. It has the lowest megapixel count of all four phones here, but retains detail the best. The tree's leaves look realistic, the railing has kept form even though it's a tad flat, but what impressed me the most was the level of detail found in the bottom section of the windows. Back to bin shots, using their mains. This pic was taken of me when walking so that we could test out shutter speed and see which camera maintains focus when taking a photo of something in motion. Needless to say, the Samsung dropped the ball here while the iPhone, Oppo and Xiaomi left no blur in sight. When taking a macro shot, all phones default to their ultra wide sensors. The Samsung isn't much better with color but packs in the most amount of detail, while the iPhone is spot on when it comes to color accuracy, providing us with another consistent, natural looking photo. Speaking of ultra wide sensors, only the Oppo and Xiaomi have high megapixel sensors, allowing them to use pixel binning for a brighter, more balanced shot. The iPhone and Samsung offer the widest field of view, and while the sky looks amazing on the Samsung, the foreground is a bit underexposed, leaving the iPhone with the most natural, balanced looking shot. Taking bin shots on all phones' main cameras of the same scene draws me back to the appreciation for the iPhone's consistency and natural balance. Moving on to zooms, the three phones on the left have three times optical zoom levels, while the Xiaomi is slightly more. The Oppo is the only one here that uses a periscope at this level, and even though the Oppo's shot might not look the best at first sight, if you pay attention to the detail of the building, you'll notice that the Oppo has the least amount of noise. The Oppo is the only one here that offers in sensor lossless zoom at six times due to its massive periscope sensor size, and takes the crown yet again here. The Samsung clearly has the advantage at 10 times optical zoom, and while the Oppo is quite a bit oversaturated, I must say it almost matches the Samsung in terms of detail, even though it lacks optical zoom at this range. 15 times zoom is the max zoom level for the iPhone, and while it seems to come out better than the Xiaomi, the Samsung and Oppo still take the cake. At 30 times, the Oppo finally does away with oversaturation in favor of clarity, but the Samsung still comes out on top in terms of detail. 70 times is the maximum zoom for the Xiaomi, and just as well. The Samsung clearly looks better than the Oppo at 100 times zoom, offering better color accuracy and detail, but this is where the Samsung caps off, leaving us with the Oppo, which can reach a max maximum zoom level of 120 times. And though it's arguably the best 120 times zoom shot I've ever seen, I'd rather have a cap of 100 times if it means better clarity. Moving on to video. All four phones can shoot 4K 60fps using their telephoto sensors for optically zoomed videos. The Oppo looks the best visually and is the most balanced in terms of lighting, especially when looking at the subject and landscape. However, it tends to lose detail in light noise as seen in the back building. The Samsung and Xiaomi are the only ones here that can shoot 8K video, but are both limited to just using the main camera. They both look fantastic, but the Xiaomi seems to edge ahead in terms of detail and lighting, even though it can be a bit oversaturated at times. They can all shoot 4K 60fps video using their mains, with the Samsung taking the lead here in terms of detail, but then again, the iPhone still seems to handle bright scenes the best, as long as you don't focus on the subject. All of them offer portrait video with their mains, but the Oppo and Xiaomi are still capped at Full HD resolution, and even though 4K is a huge advantage, here, the Oppo seems to come out the best. They can also all shoot the same resolution portrait video with their telephoto sensors, but again the Oppo tends to come out on top aside from its background light noise. They all have an option for slow motion video, but the Samsung and Xiaomi look the best, not to mention the Samsung can reach 960 FPS slow mo and the Xiaomi a whopping 1920 FPS. The Oppo has the fastest focus with the Xiaomi not far off, but the iPhone and Samsung seem to have the smoothest transition. They are all extremely stable and it's really hard to notice much difference here, but if I had to choose one it would likely be the Samsung since it seems slightly more stable thanks to its 2 times wider OIS this year as well as adaptive VDIS. And when enabling all of their stability modes using their main sensors, the Samsung once again seems to be the most stable here. Using their respective stability modes with their ultra wide sensors, we get the same resolution and FPS caps as before, but the Oppo has improved quite a bit, while the iPhone and Samsung are still identical to when using their mains 
Philippines, and the Xiaomi suffers even more from motion issues. Walking down the same path with their ultra-wide cameras set to standard stability and 4K 60fps, the Xiaomi has some focusing issues, the Oppo and Samsung seem to be the most stable, and the iPhone comes out the best looking in terms of clarity and detail. And the iPhone once again tends to handle bright light the best, but struggles to expose the subject correctly. Switching over to videos at night, I decided to leave all videos at 30fps or lower at night, since that seems to be the sweet spot for night videography. Starting with the ultra-wide, the Oppo comes out the cleanest and the brightest of the lot here, but the iPhone tends to control light noise better. When using the mains with the Samsung and Xiaomi both set to 8K, I have to say, again, the Xiaomi tends to have cleaner 8K video with less noise. The Samsung still suffers from graininess when set to 4K main video. It's slightly more detailed than the Xiaomi, but the Xiaomi comes out a lot brighter since it's the only one here with the night mode for video. However, the Oppo is the brightest here and is arguably the best of the lot, but the iPhone still seems to control light noise the best. Recording 4K video with their telephoto sensors at night have very different results. The iPhone is well balanced but comes out a tad washed out. The Samsung does not look good at all but controls background light noise the best. The Oppo is the most detailed but underexposes the bricks on the floor, and the Xiaomi is certainly a mixed bag. Telephoto portrait video at night comes out by far the best on the Oppo, but it does suffer from ISO grain. When recording portrait video with their main sensors at night, the Oppo fixes up its grain, but is now darker than before. Moving on to main portrait photos at night, you immediately lean towards the iPhone since its sharpness helps give it that extra layer of detail, but it tends to look a bit flat. The Samsung comes out a bit oversaturated, but has great depth of field. Using the telephotos for portraits at night look by far the best again on the Oppo. The Xiaomi is not far off. The Samsung is not terrible, but the iPhone is honestly pretty embarrassing. The iPhone takes a much better shot when snapping a portrait of an object using the telephoto. The Oppo might seem the best here once again, but just like the iPhone, it blurs the reflection in the mirror at the bottom of the pot plant, which means the Samsung and Xiaomi's processing is slightly ahead. Taking the same shots but using their main cameras, the iPhone looks the most natural with great edge detection if you want the background plant in full focus as well. The other three look quite good and manage to blur that back plant, which offers a better depth of field, but due to that perfect edge detection on the Samsung, I think it takes the win here, especially since those fairy lights in the background add an extra layer to the image. From here on out, we'll be using night mode on all devices if available, since these days most phones auto kick in night mode anyway to fix up ISO levels, and starting with this shot using their mains, the iPhone looks natural and is very balanced, but it struggles to handle the light noise coming from that building in the distance. The Samsung takes a fantastic shot here with a good balance between detail and exposure compensation, not to mention it handles light noise a lot better than the iPhone. Not only does the Oppo offer the most realistic representation of the scene here, but it also handles light noise the best in the shot. This is evident in this next shot as you can see how clear the exit sign is even when illuminated. The Oppo also shows off more detail in the lamppost base and staircase. And the Samsung smoothens out the base and stairs the most, not to mention it overdoes the warm yellow light of the lamp, and makes the lamp bulb more yellow in the shot as well. The Samsung and iPhone struggle to handle light in the lights deeper in the scene underneath the background buildings, whereas the Xiaomi and Oppo handle this light noise the best. The Xiaomi adds a slight tinge to those background buildings, but the iPhone and Samsung suffer from white balance here the most, while the Oppo is once again the most true to life. When it comes to ultra-wide camera performance at night, the Samsung and Xiaomi pull ahead with better handling of light. The Oppo is not quite as wide as the rest, and the iPhone seems to pick up reflections the best. Using the main camera here, the iPhone looks a bit dull and completely blows out the lights. The other three handle lights a lot better for sure. I feel the Oppo looks better in terms of brightness and realism, but doesn't handle lights as well as the other two Androids. When zooming in by three times with their telephoto cameras, the Oppo looks fantastic. Not to mention it now controls light noise the best. However, that signage in the background does actually have a blue hue in it, which the Oppo overlooks and is evident when looking at the rest. The Oppo again has six times lossless in sensor zoom using the telephoto, and even though it looks great in terms of detail in bright scenes, I feel it looks a bit like a vintage sketch, while the Samsung has a nice middle ground between the iPhone and Xiaomi. Again, the Samsung is the only one for an option for optical zoom at a 10 times range, and it shows in terms of details. 
Hands down, the Samsung looks the best with almost no noise, 15 times as the max zoom for the iPhone and just as well. At 30 times zoom, the Samsung completely drops the ball in terms of light noise and detail. 70 times is a different story though, 100 times is the maximum zoom for the Samsung and completely outshines the Oppo here. And at 120 times, the Oppo kind of produces a shot similar to the one we just saw, but slightly cropped in. Taking ultra wide selfies at night leaves the Oppo as the clear winner. The Samsung comes close but falls short in terms of color accuracy and the iPhone and Xiaomi seem a tad washed out. The Samsung and Oppo are once again the only ones that can take ultra wide selfie portraits and while the subject comes out better on the Oppo shot, the Samsung has a better, more natural but at the same time surreal background blur which gives the shot some spark. Taking the same shot with the flash on sees the Samsung tame its background blur a bit and shifts to even better edge detection. For better or worse, it also changes up its color tones, whereas the Oppo doesn't really change all that much with the flash enabled. Setting them all to standard one times at night, the iPhone is very hazy, the Xiaomi is too smoothed out, the Samsung packs in fantastic detail, but again is beaten by the Oppo in terms of color accuracy, warmth and light noise handling. Enabling portrait mode at this level has a very similar result as before in terms of subject. But the Oppo has added a strange layer of saturation and the Samsung once again adds the most flair to its background. Taking the same portrait with the flash once again tames the background flair on the Samsung and fixes up its tonal and dynamic range. The Oppo makes my skin look quite red now and the iPhone and Xiaomi can barely keep up with the two phones in the middle. It's not surprising to see them all perform poorly in terms of selfie portrait video at night and they all come out pretty bad for different reasons. I thought we'd wrap things up the same way we started so this is what selfie video looks like at night on all four devices. Let me know your thoughts on the audio as well as the video quality in the comment section down below. So to sum things up based on my personal and professional opinion in relation to my experience taking this footage, and since our opinions may differ, please be sure to give me your thoughts in the comment section down below. I feel that overall the iPhone is the most consistent in terms of photos and videos, even when shifting between different sensors. The Samsung is the best at taking superb video in daylight and offers the best video stability. It takes the best zoomed shots as well as native shots using its main camera. That said, the Oppo received the most wins in this entire comparison while the Xiaomi fell short most of the time, it's still an incredible phone to take photos and videos with, it's just slightly behind the rest. As mentioned earlier, be sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments section down below. I hope you all enjoyed watching this video as much as I did taking these photos and videos on four of the most incredible devices 2023 has to offer. This is Tech Neck and I'll catch you in the next one.